So a little background here. NCIX is a company that sold a lot of computer parts, uh, made somewhat famous by Linus Sebastian of Linus Media Group, Linus Tech Tips. And if you have been on YouTube at all, you know who Linus is. If you're in the computer world, he started there and he recently did a video and within, I think, a couple of months ago about their auction and their bankruptcy and them falling apart. Um, this is where things go off the rails, though. And this is a company called Privacy Fly. Uh, the Privacy Fly is a boutique cybersecurity firm based in Vancouver. Now, I found this very interesting and also very disturbing with all these data breaches. So if you didn't hear recently, Newegg had an incident uh, with a data breach. So they're obviously a really big computer retailer. And this is titled as a data breach, but it's a little bit different than that. And it's actually maybe a little bit worse <laughs> in some ways. So I don't know much about this Privacy Fly company at all, other than what I just read here. They don't really seem to have a ton of information uh, other than being a cybersecurity boutique. I've seen that term. I, I think there's a lot of weird branding that goes around cybersecurity. So they're a cybersecurity boutique, apparently, if I read that properly here. So anyways, the really interesting is this entire write-up about this. And of course, I'll leave a link in the article to this here. Um, Data broker, a title you likely associate with two common scenarios. The first being legal companies that focus on collecting, collating, and analyzing data is commonly used for insights and making data-driven behavior change. The second scenario is the illegal sale of data, and that's what we're dealing with here. So I, it's titled Data Breach, but let's get to this. This is a very interesting story of uh, someone posting for sale, and I believe it was on Craigslist. Uh, I think I have a cash copy of the ad. Well, it looks like the ads are all dead now, but they were up the other day. So here is the Reddit post, which I can also leave a link where there's a big discussion going on about the entire NCX data breach. But this was all started as a Craigslist ad. Then it goes a little bit deeper. So this person writes the entire story of they go in through and contacted this person off a of Craigslist ad saying that this was for sale, all the data, not just the servers. We're not talking about the servers for sale. A lot of those went for auction. And what this person did was provide uh, lots of details in here to prove that they had the data, not just these pictures here, but they had the customer data, the client data, personal files of the CEO of the company and many other people. Uh, it says Mr. Wu's computer featured personal documents and images of his family mixed with numerous private photos of high-end escorts from mainland China. So very personal information. And this is Canadian, so they're referred to as, I believe, T-S-I-N. It's as similar to the social security numbers we have here in America. Uh, but this is very concerning because none of this data was encrypted very well. So we now question the security practices over at NCX. They had apparently all these people's credit card numbers. They had all kinds of this information just in these databases. And the story gets a little bit weird too. And this is the part that I don't know how true any of this is. And this is all very subjective. We know the data is there. It's the acquisition of the data wasn't exactly from uh, the auction, it sounds like, at least with the person selling it, who they only identify as Jeff, no real details about it, who rented a nondescript office building to broker the sale and had many people purchasing it. So they were selling copies of this to people. And uh, Jeff's claim was to be from a company that NCX had owed money to and they were in possession of their servers. So they were selling their intellectual property and their customer list in order to make money. And the security researcher posed as a competing IT company that wanted to buy this data and they was negotiating a deal. So they, he breaks down all the little details in here, but um, this really comes down to something that's unfortunate for the general public, but anyone who's worked in IT for any length of time, especially in a position we are, this is waiting to happen all over the place. Uh, there is so many unencrypted hard drives, unencrypted databases. And hey, as a IT person, we really push for it. We encrypt ourselves. That is, you know, if you uh, watch any of my previous videos, we've talked about it. We encrypt uh, all of our servers. We encrypt all the data. If you power them off, they require a password to come back on. The hard drives require a password. We're using the encryption on our free NAS data storage system for everything. 
because if you encrypt everything, you don't have to worry about some encrypted, some not. We just encrypt everything. I require a password to turn on even my computer. My hard drive is encrypted. My data drive that holds all the videos that are recorded for YouTube is encrypted. Why? In case I save something there that maybe should be encrypted, I don't have to ever worry about it. I just know that I encrypt every piece of my uh, life and it makes life a little bit, you know, a little bit, if something happens, you're a little bit less worried about it. And this is clearly not the case for them. Um, and it's, and I got to admit, this is really hard. They've been in business for a long time before they went bankrupt. And when you start with unencrypted from the beginning, it's really hard to go back later because you're like, oh, I got to reset this drive up, but I built it unencrypted. And now I got to go back and set it up. Yes, you do. And we see this with small businesses all the time that have no encryption with any of their equipment as well. And it sounded like the passwords are really weak, the few passwords they did have. And they also, and this goes back to another place that we make sure we encrypt, but they didn't. Uh, they backed up and have images of lots of hard drives, of lots of the computers. So the images were unencrypted, which of course made them easy to acquire because once you can get around it real quick, hey, cool, I was able to get around this. And I'm not talking about passwords for Windows. I'm talking about proper disk encryption needs to be done. So uh, it does have a little bottom note for press. If you choose to write an article-based information, you're welcome to reuse any content from this article. Please mention the source, which I am. I'm going to leave a link to them here. So it's not too in-depth. I'll let you read through this himself. And he just walks through the story of going back and forth with the person and just how kind of disturbing this was. I find it very interesting, but I probably think this goes on way more than people even realize. You know, it, people say, well, we should hold the PCI uh, compliance people, uh, you know, because they probably passed this company as PCI compliance and never should have. I, I have mixed feelings. I get the purpose of PCI compliance. And unfortunately, many of the companies that were breached previously were follow the checkboxes. PCI compliance is very bureaucratic and not always pushed for security. And unfortunately, it gets worse in a small business market because they support PCI compliance by letting the owner of the business say, yes, I don't do these things, check some boxes, do an external scan and pass compliance. It, it goes very, very uh, not in depth, I should say, or not really well practiced. And it's always a balance in business of how much time do I spend encrypting and how much is my risk? A lot of companies roll the dice, especially in a small business market going, you know how much it would cost to redo our infrastructure to put it encrypted? We've built it for the last 15 years with these databases without encryption. So we just kind of continue to do that way, which is not right. And it needs to be thought. And the only way this is really going to change is for some of these companies to be more held their feet to the fire when this type of thing occurs. But uh, this is pretty big. Um, if you have any data in NCX, I never bought anything from them. So I hopefully I'm not in this database somewhere. Um, I don't know whether or not this uh, will be used to try to fraud the credit cards that they had on file or not. But Wow, there's a lot of things in here. I mean, look at all these disk images they have uh, listing all the different servers and things like that. So there's, it is the entirety of their data. And just if you can encourage your clients to encrypt or encrypt yourself, definitely go for it. Uh, save yourself some trouble on this. And for those of you wondering, yes, we encrypt everything. I built it that way. I you know, came from security-minded background where I encrypted things. Uh, you know, this is... It's been from the beginning, so I've been doing it, but wow, it's really scary when you see some of these companies going, wow, they never did. And this was a, especially because this was a tech company, this wasn't some company that should have known better. But I'll leave this here. Uh, make sure some finished reading. I'll leave the link because there's a lot of discussion on the uh, Reddit forum here with Sysadmin and just talking about some of the back and forth about it. It's, uh, it's a mess. It's a mess for sure. Um, there's a lot of bad security practices uh, in here. So lots of reading, lots to think about, and hopefully um, you can be the catalyst for change at your company or wherever position you are and hopefully keep this from happening again. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. 
Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.